viewers welcome to Newsweek South Asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations let's begin with the headlines first suicide attack at Karachi University targets Chinese nationals Indian security forces neutralize Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir and humanitarian needs in Afghanistan required bold response from international community Let's begin the show with Pakistan where a suicide attack at Karachi University on April 26 killed four people including three Chinese citizens. The attack was swiftly claimed by the Baloch Liberation Army, a separatist group fighting for the independence of Pakistan's troubled Balochistan province. It often targets Chinese personnel, but it is the first time when the Baloch Liberation Army used a female suicide bomber. A report Shari Baloch was a 30-year-old well-educated woman who had a master's degree in zoology and MPhil in education. According to reports, her father was a government servant while her husband is a dentist. Recently in a suicide bombing, she blew herself targeting the Chinese nationals near the Confucius Institute, a Chinese language teaching center at Karachi University in Pakistan. Three Chinese teachers and a Pakistani driver were killed in the blast. The Balochistan Liberation Army linked Majid Brigade claimed responsibility for the deadly attack, which was the first suicide bombing by a Baloch woman from the separatist group. The explosion was the first major attack against Chinese nationals in Pakistan since last year when a suicide bomber blew up a passenger bus in northern Pakistan. that killed 13 people including 9 chinese jo van aapko nazar aa rahi hai ye hostel se idhar institute ki taraf aa rahi thi hamare paas initially reports hai char casualties ki unki identification abhi nahi hui hai initial report jo bomb disposal ne diya ke explosion tha kisi level ka jo nazar aa raha hai lekin ye cheez bhi abhi hame verify karni hai The involvement of Shari Baloch, the mother of two in the attack, has sent alarm bells ringing. Common Pakistani people are wondering how an educated lady can be a suicide bomber. They should ask this question to Pakistan Army and intelligence agencies, which have forced people to become rebels. Separatist groups in Balochistan are made up of young Balochs who are disillusioned by hardship and being sidelined. from economic development projects like china pakistan economic corridor is adding to accumulated separatist feelings among them balochis have expressed their anger several times regarding chinese investments in their areas but no one lent an ear now they demand to be heard the suicide bombing at karachi university symbolizes the deep distrust of regionalist forces against exploitative china led development जिस तरह सुई का गैस सदियों से निकल रहा है लेकिन आज तक बलोचिस्तान को कोई फायदा नहीं हुआ जिस तरह ग्वादर एक मेगा प्रोजेक्ट बन गया है लेकिन बलोचिस्तान को कोई फायदा नहीं हुआ इसी तरह रिकॉर्ड एक चागी का सोना निकाला जा रहा है और उसका जो है रिजल्ट 25 परसेंट आपके सामने है 25 परसेंट कोई आपको मफादात वगैरह या कोई आपको स्कीम्स या उसके इसमें नहीं दिया जा रहा बल्कि पच्चीस लाशें दी जाएंगी आपको On one hand the province has been kept under developed to ensure exploitation of its resources on the other hand the pak army is unleashing violence on the civilians thousands of cases of enforced disappearances are registered and most of them are still unresolved pakistani security forces regularly conduct operations on individual households physically assault innocent women and children and rely on extra judicial death squads to subjugate baloch people aap sunne aap sunne aaj is waqt is mulk mein agar sabse sasti cheez hai to afsos se kehna padega ki wo baloch awam ka khoon hai मकसद से 
है Balochistan has been bleeding continuously for the last 7 decades but the world doesn't seem to have either the time or inclination to do something therefore the baloch people have now decided to take revenge on their own in an unverified video baloch liberation army has stated that unless china and pakistan withdraw from balochistan attacks will continue and that a special unit has been formed within the majid brigade to specifically target chinese officials working on sepak pakistan which has made balochistan a battlefield is paying for its own deed Indeed Pakistan has made Balochistan a battlefield and to discuss on the issue we have with us prominent Baloch activist Naila Kadri Baloch Ms Baloch how would you react to the recent incident that happened in Karachi University This is a very high time for for the world to look at Balochistan to look because who is responsible when Baloch highly educated girls and boys instead of i mean uh, uh, mother mother of two beautiful kids having a very decent family a very e well educated family if a girl of that level that uh, shari baloch was can decide to be a, a, a self sacrificer world can understand what baloch people are going through This USAID attack shows that the movement of Balochistan has been restructured into more aggressive form. Don't you think violence can create hurdles in achieving the ultimate goal which common Baloch are looking for? Who is responsible for that? The state of Pakistan and the greed of state of communist party and the communist government of China is responsible for 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 pushing our our daughters and our our sons to the to the level of self sacrificing. because there is no no political uh, platform left because united nations are not listening to baloch because the world is not listening to baloch because nobody can nobody is feeling the pain what kind of human rights violations and abuses youths face in balochistan especially those who are studying in colleges the students are are, are picked up by 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 the isi and in pakistani military every every day there is news of one student or two student or three are picked up and they are missing and after some times few dead bodies are found or 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 the dead bodies without identification they are taking and they are burying they are, they they take their organs that's why they don't let anybody to to go near them the yeah, organ harvesting of our youth miss baloch how do you see china's role in escalating balochistan crisis all all the time we have we have told china that that balochistan is an occupied country and pakistan has no right to sell our ports or our gold or our assets to anybody so please don't come but with the entrance of china the human rights violations they reached at the level of genocide because pakistan army was trying to please china and bulldozing our our villages they were wiping our villages they were killing our people absolutely china cannot evade its responsibility at this critical point thank you ms baloch for joining us Let's now move on to India's Jammu and Kashmir where security forces are successfully neutralizing terrorist one after another. Pakistan is trying hard to whip up havoc and violence through continuous terror attacks and infiltration bids in Kashmir. But vigilant and highly trained Indian security forces are giving befitting reply to every challenge. Take a look. There has been a spate in encounters in Jammu and Kashmir. The elaborate operation has come after a spurt in the number of targeted killings of minority communities and non-locals, including street vendors, politicians and teachers, particularly in South Kashmir. 
While terrorists from many groups have been targeted during the anti-terror operations, Lashkar-e-Taiba has borne the maximum brunt of the security forces. According to Jammu and Kashmir police, more than 62 terrorists have been killed in the valley so far this year, and most of them were affiliated with the Lashkar-e-Taiba outfit. Others belong to jaish e Muhammad, Hezbul Mujahideen and Al-Badr group. Most of these terror outfits have their origin in Pakistan. The valley is witnessing encounters on one after another. The recent one broke out between terrorists and security forces in Pulwama district. Security forces launched a cordon and search operation following the inputs about the presence of terrorists there. The encounter happened just a few days after another confrontation in which at least two terrorists affiliated to Pakistan-based group jaish e Muhammad were killed in India's northern Kulgam district of Jammu and Kashmir. आज दोपहर में एसएसपी कुलगांव को एक खबर मिला था कि मेरहवा गांव में तीन से चार जेस मोहम्मद के टेरिस छिपे हुए हैं तो कुलगांव पुलिस की छोटी टीम और आर्मी की नाइन राष्ट्रीय राइफल की छोटी टीम जाके पहले कॉर्डन डाला कॉर्डन डालते ही इनकाउंटर शुरू हो गया जिसमें दो टेरिस्ट मारे गए हैं जेस मोहम्मद के Indian security forces also have intelligence inputs about the presence of terrorists across the international border in Pakistan. The border security force is on alert and patrolling has been increased to ensure peace on the border. The BSF has continued its annual tunnel drive in Jammu, Samba and Katua districts. Recently, BSF had recovered a cache of arms and ammunition during a search operation along the international border in Jammu. हम अपने एरिया में डेली बेसिस पे डेप्थ एरिया पेट्रोलिंग करते हैं जिसमें हम अपना पूरा एरिया छानते हैं कोई ऐसे टेल टेल साइन या फिर टनलिंग के ओपनिंग कहीं पे पाई जाती है तो उसको हम चेक करते हैं अब इसके साथ साथ पेट्रोलिंग भी चलती रहती है हम अपने स्पेशल इक्विपमेंट्स या उसके जरिए भी हम चेक करते रहते हैं पाकिस्तान हैज ऑलवेज सॉट विद वेरिंग डिग्रीज ऑफ इंटेंसिटी टू डीस्टेबलाइज इंडिया रेक इट्स यूनिटी एंड चैलेंज इट्स इंटीग्रिटी This approach is unlikely to change, but Indian security forces are always vigilant, alert, and capable of giving a befitting reply. Months after the Taliban's takeover, Afghanistan is in crisis. Millions of people are facing starvation. The healthcare system is collapsing, and wages are plummeting. As Afghans struggle to meet basic needs, they are being pushed to take desperate measures including child labor and child marriage. News reports have also surfaced of children being sold. But the de facto rulers are engaged in exhibiting their power. Videos of Taliban training centers are emerging in public domain. A report. Viral videos on social media are highlighting the level of food insecurity in Afghanistan. People could be seen desperately clamoring for bread being distributed on road. Millions of people in the war-torn country are facing an unprecedented crisis. The deepening economic crisis is affecting all levels of Afghan society, but it is hitting harder on the most vulnerable. Every day, daily workers could be seen waiting on Kabul streets for someone to hire them. People in Afghanistan are selling their children and their body parts in order to feed their families. On one hand, people are losing their hope of survival. On the other hand, videos of graduating Taliban soldiers emerging on social media. The Taliban are spending more on new troops, yet do not have money for Afghans. It would be unwise to expect sensibility from the Taliban. but those who can help common afghans need to play their role now the international community must find ways to spare the afghan people from the impact of the decision to halt development support you see taliban has been a fighting force all along and at this stage they need to learn how to govern 
and that has been their major challenge. Now, as we know that there are large number of groups because Taliban is also not a homogeneous entity. And therefore, what we see is that there is there are many challenges that it is facing. It is still waiting for recognition from the world. It is also uh, hoping that it will continue to receive the funding that has been committed so that it can also provide relief to the people. But till then, the more and more people will get disenchanted and therefore in order to keep them under control. The first step in any meaningful humanitarian response must be to halt the death spiral of the Afghan economy. Without that, even the best funded and most effective aid operation will not save the people of Afghanistan from an unimaginable future. As the world focuses its attention on the war in Ukraine, the United Nations has reminded the international community to remember Afghanistan, to save the lives and livelihoods of those in the landlocked country. There is an urgent need for restoring international support to the people of Afghanistan. But the problem is that now with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, obviously the focus on Afghanistan or any other war is much less. And that is the pity of it all. And this has been often mentioned by our leadership as well. That they create problems and then they leave them. And that is not good. So Taliban is today looking for some kind of engagement with the world powers, especially with the major powers and the neighboring powers. But what we are seeing is if they are not addressed well quickly, we'll be seeing them totally going into the Chinese hands. And that may not be very good for the region and for the world. Taliban leaders should understand that to engage with the world community, they have to show they are not having the same ideology. They need to respect the basic human rights of common Afghans. Recently, Washington DC-based non-profit organization organized a congressional briefing and podium discussion on the topic, banning of Afghan women's education and other human rights violations under the Taliban. The attendees requested the international community and USA to pressurize the Taliban to let the girls go to school. We are having a program regarding um, human rights violations in Afghanistan and we wanted to raise our voice um, and ask the American government to pressurize the Taliban to allow Afghan girls to be able to go back to their schools and end to the atrocities that are happening in Afghanistan. Tens of thousands of Afghans have fled or have been evacuated, including large numbers of educated elites. To save their country, the de facto rulers need to guarantee the rights of all Afghans. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nws at anin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.